Hey guys, welcome to that pedal show. Dan here, Mick here, and Kirk Fletcher. Yes. yes! <laughs> oh. <laughs> I love that. Oh. Welcome, <laughs> Kirk. It's been too Thank long. You. It's been too oh. long. We've been we've been emailing backwards and forwards for probably two years now. Going, we we need to do this. We need to to get this. Uh, get this sorted but we're very pleased to say Kirk is here welcome welcome thank you so much so Glad we we first caught up with you um, at well I first caught up with you in in Germany That's at right. Mannheim at Guitar Point in yeah, Mannheim Guitar Point. where Josh was playing and you were there yeah and uh, I thought hang on because I went there to see Josh to give him his new pedal board yeah. and Kirk was there and sorry, we need, to, we need to give Josh a... Oh yeah, sorry, yeah. we do, we do, we do. Sorry, I'm, I'm a little bit perturbed about the noise I can hear, as uh -oh. always, which hopefully will become more relevant as the show goes on. <laughs> That's for Josh. Hello, Josh. Hey, Josh. Uh, um, I was, it was incredible. Hearing these two guys play together, um, the brief conversation I've had, you know, for me, it's yeah, yourself... Um, uh, Josh Smith and Matt Schofield, the three guys who at the moment for me are it's sort of are really pushing the genre. And I don't just mean in a in a marketing sense. I mean, you know, what um, Robin Ford did uh, in the sort of late eighties, early nineties. You can't say blues, Dan. It's so, no, no, no. I know. So, but, <laughs> but for me, the, what, what, Robin, what Robin Ford did for the blues in like the late eighties, early nineties, I think, and these guys are now. Yeah. Pushing that forward, I, totally I think it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. Oh, um, yeah, so you know, welcome. It's so great to have you here. So glad to be here. Uh, so what so we've been uh, sort of talking backwards and forwards, and I did the rig for Josh. Then we got to talking. It's like, yeah. okay, um, you know, can we help you out with the pedal board? And then this has turned up today, and I'm thinking, yes, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> We can do stuff. Yeah, so just, help. just to explain what's happened, this video will be in a few parts. We've kicked off, we've literally just plugged Kirk in to Super Reverb, which is an amp you use regularly. Yeah. As well as a 633 um, amplifier too as well. Yeah. Right here, UK's own. Oh, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cliff Brown, yeah. Um, so we've, we've plugged him into something familiar. Normally at gigs you turn up, you chuck all your pedals on the floor, plug them in, so we're wondering if um, you're going to notice any change by just us getting that together a bit more, uh, or us, Dan, getting that together a bit more, <laughs> and seeing, seeing what we can do. So um, I'm going to jump behind the camera and swivel around a bit. Maybe you guys could just have a quick flick through the pedals okay. and mm -hmm. some reactions on what you're hearing and, and all of that. Cool. Does that work? Yeah, yeah, great. Okay. As you are, gentlemen. <laughs> okay, well, let's start. I first saw this on Josh's board. Yeah. This is the, which is the Tula. Me too. Um, <laughs> and it's it's amazing. So, uh, Sean from Love Pedal makes Sean, these. The man. The man. The man. <laughs> Play a little. Yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> Awesome. 
think a lot of people will be surprised when they see you with quite a number of pedals. <laughs> um, so, you know, take me through a normal setup for a gig. Do you do this at every gig? Just lay them all out, plug them all in and... I usually pick and choose. I'll use the Topanga and um, the Flashback and either the Venurum, Jan Ray, mm -hmm. or the Chula, depending on which guitar. And I'll bring a Wawa if I need, you know, and a tuner. Right. But um, mostly if I'm playing Fender style guitars, I'll use the Chula because it adds body. And then the Venurum, if I'm playing Humbucker, you know, Gibson style. Oh, guitar, okay. Because I can cut bass, you know. Right. And then the tube screamer, the tube dreamer, sorry. Uh, I use that to kind of like enhance the mids. And I really like the tube screamer on like humbucker guitars. Mm. It kind of reminds me of kind of a Larry Carlton kind of ish kind of thing, you know, that kind of nice. mids with yeah. the humbuckers. Takes a little bass away. Yeah, so that's what I'll usually use. And we've had uh, some conversations recently about phases as mm -hmm. well. And you've gone with the small stone, which I love. I've got a bunch of the. Um, original ones and this yeah. is the reissue mm -hmm. sounds amazing um, so what is it about the small stone you know it has to do with um, I think the Crusaders those other night spiral <laughs> yeah. you know awesome. like, or like uh, keep that same old feeling that yeah. kind of really smooth thing and also Richard T the um, keyboard player they mm. use the Rhodes and a small stone so that it's just really smooth and subtle yeah because it's a very different phaser. Yeah, it's than, different. It's you know sort of stands aside from the the phase nineties and you know the other phases from you know the, from the seventies. But it's definitely a same thing, which is wonderful. Uh, now the flashbacks as well. Um, we want to put Josh's tone print in there <laughs> in the small one. In the small one, uh, which is great. Um, and finally the Topanga um, Spring Reverb from Catlin Bread, which yeah. is, sounds amazing. Um, I love it. Now, that you, if you're normally playing the a, a super or this uh, the six three three, does that have re reverb as well? No, that's basically a tweed basement style, amp right? Okay, and with no reverb. But even if I'm even if an amp has reverb, yep. I still use this because I just like the way it hits the front end of the amp with the little boost on it. Nice. That. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Let's start laying things out then, and let's uh, let's see what we can do. <laughs> so here's the, okay here's the idea mm -hmm. the idea is we're going to put everything in a switcher all right a lot of the, so all that top end loss that you're hearing uh -huh. is everything being chained together uh -huh. all right so what this will do essentially it'll take everything out of the signal path when it's not being used mm -hmm. um, and give you more of a direct signal That was already on. It's on. It's on? Wow. <laughs> That's already on. There's no noise at all. It's louder too. Yeah. With cleaner so there's no buffers on there or anything that's just guitar 
straight to the app. Wow. Sustain everything. Wow. It really did sound bad before. <laughs> wow. It didn't, it didn't sound bad, but it's, the interesting thing is, especially with humbuckers, mm -hmm. they're so sensitive to any loading. Oh. Um, and so as soon as it plugged in, we, and I thought, I thought this is going to be good, <laughs> you know. But yeah, but you can, you know, and that's that's loud, you know. With, really? Uh, well, wow. you know, you hear, there's, plenty, there's plenty of volume there. Yeah, yeah, know? absolutely, absolutely. Um, yeah, so we got everything labeled out, so we've got the, you know, that's just the. Isn't that, that wonderful? A little bit flat. Sounds like me. <laughs> right. yeah. So, uh, the Chula. my chula it's still not wow it's still not noisy it's still amazing um okay and the wah so I've got a quick question yeah about the chula mm -hmm. um, so what I was hearing there was there was all that top end Mm -hmm. kind of brightness back is that mm -hmm. now too much or is that how you like it well i think that's just because it's running on power instead of a battery i think yeah right and it's cleaner yeah. but you're yeah. hearing you're losing all that capacity so all of the cables yeah all the so cables. yeah, yeah. It, and the thing is the the chula and it's it's, it's amazing but it's very sensitive mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. if you've got all the pedals uh, it's not just about the impedance going into it it's also about the pedals after it so you know because that's at the front you got a massive chain at mm -hmm. the end um, and that will have an effect, you know, but now when we, we go to that, it's just the chewing. Sounds really, really, really good. <laughs> uh, so now, so we have the chiller before the wah. Mm -hmm. So, so the great thing about this is you don't have to uh, to lean over and sort of kick it on anymore. It's always on. Just turn it on there. And which is also cool because you can leave it in a cocked wah position. Yeah, and just turn. If you've it got on. your your jan ray, you might make here. one going on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Jan Ray likes the humbuckers, doesn't it? Yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah, it says ace. Um, okay, Tube Screamer. Tube Dreamer, sorry. Tube, tube Dreamer. Tube Dreamer. <laughs> This will be interesting. So, the small stone. Oh, man. 
I love that pedal. It's one of my favorite pedals of all time. Yeah, it's... it's... I love it. Small stone. Sorry. It's a bit, um, <laughs> it, when you, when you have, when you hear someone that can actually play funk, like proper oh. funk, it's, it's awesome. It's so cool. It's so cool. Anyway. It's all the pedal. It's all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, then we have the delay. So we've put the delays in the same loop. Mm -hmm. Um, so that, you know, you could choose between the long delay or the short delay, or both, but just kick them on. Sounds amazing. Sounds amazing. Okay, and finally we have the reverb. Um, oh, we forgot the slapback. Oh, so, sorry, we've got the slapback. <laughs> right, slapback. Right, here we go. Do you want to put um, Josh's? I'm gonna oh yeah! Into the, you do that. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so Dan, I'm just gonna give Dan a quick lesson in the camera. It's really interesting because when we got here this morning, um, obviously we've been chatting and stuff since, mm -hmm. but uh, while Dan was building the board, before that had all happened, it kind of sounded a bit funky, didn't it? And there was a lot of noise and there was, yeah. at, one, at one point we were both looking at the round at the super going, is that right? Is there something? But I can already tell from 
two minutes of you playing, you're you started to play the guitar rather than think about sound. Oh yeah, totally. Does it feel like that? Oh, absolutely. Because it's clear, and that's what I like. I like a real clear tone, and it's like nothing's getting in the way or coloring the tone, you know. So that's amazing. <laughs> but still, I got all my goodies, you know, that I can mess with. <laughs> <laughs> Um, right, so um, one thing that uh, Kirk wanted to do was um, both Kirk and Josh Smith have some tone prints at TC Electronic. Um, yours are reverbs, right? Mm -hmm. Josh has a one particular delay that we're going to try and tone print into. Um, it's like a slapback Kirk's, kind of thing. Yeah, it just takes <clears> a minute just for the uh, app to load up here. Now, mm -hmm. what I'm not sure, I think we might have to turn that flash back off. Mm -hmm. Um, and turn it off out of make sure it's not on in the loop mm -hmm. because I don't want the tone print to go to both pedals. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be cool? So I don't exactly know because they're on the same loop at the moment. Are they delays, they Dan? Yeah, they are. So it might be. Oh no, because it would have to be in tone print for that to work. Mm -hmm. So, right, byproduct. Remember this screen in the TC tone print editor? Ruling. <laughs> Ruling. Uh, okay, so it's the flashback mini delay, right? And we want Josh Smith, who did get a hoot earlier, but he should have another one now. Totally. <laughs> um, Who's on tour in Germany right now? How is he? Yeah. So close, but yet so far. Come on. There he is, Josh Smith. Double slap, does that sound about right? That sounds about right. Okay, so we'll turn it on. I don't even know if it needs to be turned on or not, but we'll turn it on. If you could turn your volume control up, uh, and stick it on the bridge pickup. Mm -hmm. that's, yeah, that's on. Right. I'll turn it up a bit. Dan really loves this. Right, there we go. Um, the truth is that there was a bit of messing around and there was a cut there, but <laughs> um, we've now managed to beam Josh Smith's slap back in. Does that sound about okay. right? It sounds fantastic. Would you pair that with something normally? Yeah, I would put that on something maybe a little bit. I don't know how to describe it. We were talking earlier about bright sounds and not fearing treble and high end and stuff. <laughs> Kirk, Kirk is that particular brand of guitar player who doesn't. You not anymore. No, because because I guess in the environments that you're playing, you need that to cut through and to get that aggression. You know, let's maybe let's talk briefly about your your journey as a as a. As a player, so you started playing really young. Mm -hmm. Started playing in my father's church when I was maybe eight or nine. Right, because he was a, a pastor. Mm -hmm. Um, and you grew up in Compton, is that right? Yeah, I grew up first in Lakewood, and then we moved to Compton. So <laughs> miles apart, right the there, culture and everything. L.A. amid all of that. Yeah, amid all of that, blimey, O'Reilly. Mm -hmm. Um, so you started playing really early. What was it about blues? And that end of guitar playing that really... Well, my older in. brother um, played guitar and he got me into it. And I mean, this was the 80s, so it was like guitar was very important in the 80s, you know. You know, like it or love it or hate it or disagree, the guitar was there in music videos yep. and guitar publications, magazines, instructional videos and all that. So it was a great time to pick up the guitar and... 
It was just, you know, this whole community, my brother and then as well as hanging out in music stores and the whole community of guitar was just awesome. But, and am I right in saying that, that when you were, there was a chance encounter at a music store and that's mm -hmm. how you kind of got into Robin Ford and that route, is that correct? Yeah, I was into Robin before um, that because I had the inside story or something like that on record. Mm. But this music store, Music Works, and Jim Foote and this other guy, Ken, Ken Hitzman, um, they were at this music store and... Um, you know, it was just great to actually see people making a living playing music, you know. And so I used to uh, help out a friend of mine, a really good friend of mine, Jeff Rivera, with uh, Robin's gear because he was Robin's tech at that time. So I got a chance to, like, be all incognito and check out, you know, what's going down with Robin Ford and the blue line at that time. And it was just invaluable. I mean. How old were you around that time? Oh, 19. Okay, so right, yeah. Yeah, right at that <laughs> pivotal point, you know, Robin came along with Roscoe Beck and Tom Brickline and changed my life. Uh, and were you playing by that point? Were you oh, yeah. out playing? Were you gigging, playing all the time? Yeah. I'm sort of fascinated because the years roll roll forward. Um, you had a stint in the Fabulous Thunderbirds, mm -hmm. which must About have been three years or so. Awesome training. That was amazing. I had already played with Kim Wilson, the lead singer for the Fabulous Thunderbirds, in sort of a solo traditional blues project before yep. that. And that was even more just amazing because I really got to hone in on traditional blues playing and help my musical education, shall we say. It's, <laughs> it's, it's kind of fascinating for me because if you take out the however many miles are in between the southwest of England and Los Angeles, California. <laughs> so a lot of your heroes are the same as mine. So then I, I later find out that you're friends with Michael Landau. How did you how did you meet him? How did that association come about? <laughs> this is going to sound really, really crazy. But <laughs> actually... Um, Alexander Dumble introduced me to my glad now. <laughs> I know this is retarded. I know it's just weird. Sounds like I'm totally name dropping or whatever. Uh, I think for the first time ever, would you please give Alexander Howard Dumble a honk? Alexander! <laughs> yes. We got there in the end. Yeah. <laughs> Like, because through this music store, Music Works, once again in Lawndale, California, they became, Alexander and Jim Foote became friends through Drew Berlin. It's all this whole, like, circle of guys, you know. Yeah. And I met Alexander, and we became fast friends, and he introduced me to, he brought Landau and Sonny Landorf out to one of my gigs, so you can imagine how nervous <laughs> I was. So I was like, this is not happening right now. <laughs> So I was nervous and I couldn't play, but whatever. <laughs> so me and Landau have been friends ever since. I, that, that's got to be. I think that ranks as the coolest story ever on, on that <laughs> battle show, doesn't like, it? It's, it's 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 at least the best name drop ever. Oh uh, no! It's like it actually through Dumble I met uh, Travis Carlton too. Oh man! Through yeah. Yeah, Travis is Larry Carlton's son. Who plays yeah, the bass, yeah. For anyone who doesn't know that. Um, Okay, so you can you can read all about this biographical stuff about Kirk mm. if you go onto his website, if you look him up on Wikipedia, whatever, um, any route that you would normally do to do that. But let's fast forward. So, are you going to do another solo album? Yes, actually, uh, I'm you know preparing for that right now as Excellent. we speak, sort of. Well, not as we speak, but you know. Soon, now. It's, it's always a difficult question, because making records is not easy, right? But we had um, Kirk's 2010 <laughs> solo record on earlier, and if you haven't heard it, please go and listen, because... It's amazing. Yeah, it it's is. It's absolutely amazing. It is amazing. couple questions um, about blues guitar playing. Mm -hmm. And if you're cool with it, I'd like you to take us through maybe a few of your key influences. Sure. Stylistically. My favorite thing to talk about. Awesome. Because we just... What what we're trying to do here is deliver a little bit of the 
you know, we, we've been really lucky hanging out with Coke today. And, you know, when we oh. get to hang out with Joey and Matt and all the guys that we hang out with. So I just... All of my bros. I want to try and... <laughs> Dan and I want to try and just bring a little bit of this to bear. So mm -hmm. where did it begin for you? Who was the player that you heard first that you went, that's it. I'm in the game. Well, there are two things that happened. The first was my brother had like a BB King greatest hits cassette tape that I heard. Not, we're talking eight, nine years old. And I was just like, this is the music my parents talked about. This is what they were talking about. <laughs> now I get it. And this has all the guitar I could ever want on it with BB playing. So I was young and I heard that and that just killed me. And then I saw Albert Collins in 1988 at the Long Beach Blues Festival. Debbie Davis was playing. No way. And uh, it just uh, blew my mind. And that same day, I saw the Staple Singers, and I think Roy Gaines was there. And so that was it. I was done. In 1988, it was over. I was like, I want to do this, you know. So if you're thinking about BB when you approach the guitar, mm -hmm. you have an appropriately shaped guitar there, I see. Um, <laughs> what? What? And tummy, no. <laughs> With all due respect. No. What um, what do you think about when you when you're thinking about BB? Then what does he bring to mind when it comes to the electric guitar? Well, BB had so many different. This is what people. I don't think people really understand when I say how much of an influence BB King was on my playing and so many others. Is BB went through different periods. Mm. He had more of the period where it was more, you know, without so much vibrato and kind of played more in the meat of the guitar, I like to say. Kind of coming out of that T-Bone Walker, kind of, you know. You know, that kind of thing. And then... <laughs> it's, so, it's so funny to hear it done properly. Because we all think we know it, but oh, he knows it. That, I, I'm terrible. I mean. <laughs> you, the way you mention T-Bone and you instantly play that sort of kind of chromatic... Oh, well, you know. You know, that kind of like... That's amazing. I mean, he should... He should have been president, but <laughs> but you know like no comment <laughs> like uh, that whole thing, and then he went through you know um, sort of like trans transitioning into like the you know that thing. Can so I hear that with some volume? Sorry. Can I hear that with some volume? <laughs> And I think, you know, Peter Green and <laughs> all of the guys that I love, you know, I think you guys heard him over here, too, <laughs> which is beautiful. I mean, that, and that really, B.B. is the guy, and I have so many other people that I love. I mean, Albert Collins, Albert K. I, sh I should not start naming names because I'm scared I'm going to leave out somebody. But uh, Otis Rush, um, and then all of the, like, Chicago blues, too, like, well, guys that came from Mississippi to Chicago, you know, Muddy, yeah. Waters, and Eddie Taylor, and, you know, J.B. Hutto, and whoever else, you know, like that whole style, that's the thing I think that maybe um, that I have gravitated towards is like that thing as well as like the West Coast guys, you know, like Larry Carlton who was influenced by BB2 in a different way, you know, and yeah. kind of brought it into a kind of mainstream pop music of, you know, when he was making a lot of records with a lot of famous people. But, uh, yeah, that really influenced me too. So I kind of have these two different styles. And then the whole thing where Robin Ford, who's another big uh, influence, um, laying everything out all over the fingerboard. Yeah. Because that's, that's one, one thing that always surprised me about Kirk's playing, well, not always surprises, but one thing that is immediately arresting about your playing is that 
I don't know quite how to describe it other than blues enhanced and I hear it in Matt Schofield, I hear it in Josh Smith, hear it in you, where, where you've got that extended harmonic mm. knowledge where I guess you just explained it in terms of linking the fingerboard. So yeah. how does that come together? What, what, what are well, we talking about there? For me, I don't have like really much of any harmonic sophistication going on because I, you know, some of my friends, you know, <laughs> You know what I mean? They know the yeah, guitar. Yeah. You know, it's like they're like playing the guitar and they know the ins and outs of harmony and everything. And I think that's amazing. But to find my own niche was to kind of like phrase, kind of like Robin or Larry, kind of in that thing, but play like kind of like BB Otis Rush and all those guys and kind of mix the two and put a little Maceo Parker kind of funky thing in there too you know yeah because there's a lot of soul i, I hear it in the chords you play and the rhythms you play i can hear a lot of 60s that's that soul yeah soul. yeah that's that's what i love yeah i mean macy o parker and james brown a lot of james brown records you know maybe we could hear could we hear a little bit of the robin-y more robin -y side of you i know it's tough to pick out players but i'm kind of fascinated how it well i'm together. not ashamed to say that i <laughs> stole a lot from mr ford <laughs> but that kind of like i mean i know that's probably like more of a barney castle thing with the you know like the or somebody else you know with the whole but I got it from Robin. Sort of like. Oh, kind of. Well, Schofield kind of. He skips over those strings. It's so cool. <laughs> yeah, I guess because there comes a point where it all just melds in, and it, and at that point, it's. It's you by that bit. Yeah. But I guess what I was driving towards there was, like, there's probably, if, if there are any guitar teachers watching, they'll, they'll tell me what it's actually called, but it's all the mm -hmm. tricky fills between the licks. So with the traditional blues guys, mm -hmm. you just got the licks, and then with, with that second generation, or third generation, I guess, by that point, fourth generation by that point, they're filling in the tricky, mm -hmm. the fluidity. That's what I was referring to when you were kind of playing those little trills and mm -hmm. in and out of the... Well, <clears throat> that, you know, Robin, I think, told me a long time ago, because I really didn't know anything. And he said, you know, like, yeah, you know, I play, try and play all over the fingerboard instead of just in one spot, because that'll kind of separate you from, you know, other guys and other things, <laughs> you know, just playing in one position, which is cool. And a lot of my favorite guitar players play in one position, but. I always listened at Robin and was like, man, I want to get a little of that kind of sophistication, little fancy mm -hmm. thing in there, you know. Yeah. And it just moved me as a kid, you know, to hear him play because I was really coming out of the Stevie Ray Vaughan school. And still, he's one of my biggest influences. But, you know, I just, I, I got to see Robin play live. And, you know, anybody that's seen a fantastic guitar player live, it's something totally different than hearing it on the record, you know. Yeah. So that really, you know, that helped. I can't even play like that anymore. But um, just playing in one position is just like more natural to me now to play. kind of thing but still keep that like Chicago uptown BB T-bone thing too yeah what what defines that would you say the uptown thing is it that that major third note yeah. in there you know uptown yeah. you know, I love I, no. I'm gonna I'm gonna grab a guitar lead because there's something we got to do. Yeah. Uh, I just I want to play some chords underneath, mm -hmm. and let's see if I can let's see if I've got enough groove to do that. Oh, of course um, you do. 
because I want to I want to hear Kirk. Just grabbed a guitar, plugged in to play some chords, um, so Kirk can stretch his legs a little bit, perhaps, or just see see what happens. Was that so we were B flat? Yeah. That kind of thing. You want to. Say one yeah! thing. <laughs> I must say something before I say anything else. That was stolen from Chris Kane because <laughs> Chris Kane is just as important to me as anybody. I mean, I saw Chris Kane when I was about 19, also, and he. If you've never heard Chris Kane, you definitely have to go buy anything that you can find with Chris Kane on. He's an amazing guitar player. Chris Kane. Okay, where's he from? Is he from your neck of the woods? He's from the Bay Area. Okay. Yeah, and he's so in that tradition of, you know, B.B. Albert and as well as got the jazz, you know, thing going for sure. Yeah, check out Chris Kane for sure. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so we've heard um, some, some nice clean tones. I think let's just get you to go through the board, switching things on and off. It might be hard to do the wah-wah with up there. Might yeah, have to, uh, <laughs> whatever feels good. Let's get some gains going, stack some yeah, up, and sure. just see how you feel about about the board as it is and kind of mm -hmm. everything, everything working together. Mm -hmm. Switch away, switch away, see what you like. That one sounds amazing. That was the Jan Ray. keep that on in a solo with gain or we only ever use it clean I mean maybe I don't know we'll see <laughs> I 
got my Funkadelic thing going on there. <laughs> it's Eddie Hazel, he's here. Yeah, right, I like it. It's um, it's just a beautiful combination of everything. It just it's so the Collings uh, I thirty five. Yeah. You know, whenever I hear those guitars, it's like I never really got to the three three five thing. Mm -hmm. But for me, it sort of that stands apart from mm -hmm. certainly from most three three fives I've played. I haven't really got the vintage stuff because mm -hmm. they're just they're so oh, crazy now. Yeah. But uh, yeah, they just. They sound amazing and they're bright, you know. I can see Mick with one of those in the very near future. So, but I shouldn't uh, drop you in it, but I can definitely see you with one of those. Oh, <laughs> totally. um, Yeah, that's fun. Man. Yeah, and the, uh, and a super, but you know, man, I just, it's, when you hear the, it's, it's so much music coming out, you know. Awesome. It's a lot of fun. It act. I can't. I'm. I. I really can't believe this. How much different it sounds. Really. It's amazing. It. It sounds incredible. It's so clean and pure, but not like weird clean and pure. It's not. Right. It's. It's very musical. Oh, um, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, I'm so glad you're happy, and you know, I'm, I wow. wanted to do this for you for. The longest time, so <laughs> it's uh, yeah. I'll, I appreciate it. It's, and thank you so much for dropping by and you know. It was my out. pleasure, absolutely. And thank you for the free Skype lessons for the rest of our lives. You know, <laughs> we really, totally. Really appreciate that. Really appreciate that too. Wow. Oh man. Um, brilliant. Okay. Cheers, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, massive thank you to our patrons on Patreon. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Thank also, you. massive thank you to our preferred retailers in the UK and Europe is uh, Anderson's Music of Guildford. Sorry. Very good. Anderson's, I know those guys. They're awesome. great. They're, they're great. Uh, <laughs> in the USA, it is Riff City Guitar. Uh, and in Australia, Pedal Empire in Brisbane. Excellent. Um, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Uh, go and check out. Uh, Kirk's uh, solo stuff um, with the album that we had on before. What's it called? It's called My Turn. Actually, it's Kirk Fletcher. And just My Turn. awesome, you know. So I'm now please, gonna be... please do a new album, Kirk. Please do yeah, a new yeah. album. By spring next year. Fabulous, fantastic. Yes. Thanks again, mate. We're, we're going to just let Kirk play and and uh, Mick and I just gonna be sat in the corner, sort of you know, trying to suck it in. <laughs> Cheers, guys. We'll see you soon. <laughs>
this thing. Just right there in the 70s. I love it. <laughs> So cool. Totally do it. <laughs> 